Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. In today's video, I'm outside. That's right, I actually uh, opened the front door and walked outside. I recently stumbled across this really cool video on YouTube with a guy dancing with a lot of different sets in the background and I thought it would be really cool if me and a whole bunch of you guys from the community all chipped together and made something similar, but with Cinema 4D. It doesn't matter if there's dogs walking in your shot, if cars go over the shot or people or whatever. We're going to sort all that out in compositing. All you need to do is make sure that there's no thieves waiting behind trees ready to steal your shit. Now, of course, some of you might be reluctant to take that first step outside of your front door. And for you comfort lovers, uh, you can still take part in this tutorial. No bother at all. Now, for those of you who are willing to step outside, here's what you need to do. Grab your video camera or phone and tripod if you have one. Go to your favorite nearby location. Imagine where you want your dancer to dance and record about 10 seconds of footage. If you've no tripod, you'll have to find a workaround. So once you have your video footage ready to go, you just need to download the song that we're going to be using for this video from the description below. And then you're going to have your video footage and you're going to have the song. So the next step and the last step before you can actually get started is to head over to Mixamo. Now Mixamo has a huge library of dances that you're going to be able to choose from, characters also. But we're all going to be using the same character just to keep it nice and consistent. So you'll find the character by scrolling down and he's there, he's kind of a mannequin guy. And then we can just go and search for whatever dance, whatever dance you like, you can choose the dance that you prefer. Um, once you're happy with the dance, you need to make sure that you set the overdrive. Now this is really important because we need to play the song so that we're going to be able to set the overdrive. And what the overdrive does is it basically speeds up or slows down the actual dance. So it's important that we do get the overdrive right, that it matches up with the beat of the song. So just make sure that you're listening to the song as you're twiddling around with the overdrive. All you have to do then is basically watch the tutorial, create your own video, with your own dancing guy in it, send it on to me. The email is in the description below. I'll put whatever I get together and I'll upload it and credit everybody who took part. So let's get started on this. Here we go. So before we get started, make sure that you have download, uh, downloaded these two files from the description below. The first one being uh, motion capture data and the second one being the street video mp4 file. Once you have those downloaded we can jump into Cinema 4D and we can bring in our character. So just go over here to file, click on merge objects and then we can just double click on that to bring in our character. Click OK on that and say no to this. Now we can see that you might have to actually increase your frame range there or you might not. Uh, if we hit play, you can see our characters dancing away. Great, so next we're going to pause that and let's create a background object. Now if we create a new material, call this background video. We can then open that up, turn off the color and the reflectance channels and just turn on luminance. Now we can load in our background video. and we can apply that to our background object and there it is. Now if we hit play it's not actually going to play, the video is not going to play because we have to turn on something inside of our material. So just open that up and click on the thumbnail. Actually don't click on the thumbnail, just go down here to editor and then you can turn on animate preview. Now our video is going to start playing away there in the background. Next we can create a camera, make it active, and then we can line up, try our best to line up our grid with our real life scene. Just so our, our guy looks like he's actually there. So let's do that now. We're just, I'm just moving my camera around using the, the normal controls to do so. And I'm just trying to line up the grid here with the real life floor. Something like this. 
And then we can use our zoom in and out to decide how big or small our character is going to be. So if we zoom right in, he's going to be really big. And if we zoom right out, he's going to be pretty small. So I want him kind of human size, something like that, maybe even smaller. And where you put him on the Y is actually going to also change his um, the appearance of his scale. So um, make sure you keep that in mind. Just try and get him looking human size. Or you might want him looking smurf size, so that's up to you as well. But I'm going to go for human size, something like this. And I'm just trying again, using my rotate camera tool I'm just um, rotating the uh, camera so that I can get a better line up here with my grid with my real life floor so I'm happy enough with that and that's looking pretty good so now we're going to create an actual floor that's going to act as a shadow catcher for us because right now if we render well we don't have any lights so we're not going to see any shadow so uh, we need a floor to catch that shadow. So let's just create a plane object and we can increase the size of that nice and big so that our shadow won't be cut off by the edge. And next we can create a sky object and we're going to create a material for this sky object and in that material we're going to load in a frame of our video. And then we're going to turn on global illumination and then what that's going to do is it's kind of going to simulate the lighting of the actual video scene that we have. So how do we get that frame? So what you can do is hop into After Effects, double click here in the, uh, in the panel here on the left and let's find our video file. So I have it here, and I'm going to import that in. Now I'm just going to drag this down to my composition icon here and release, and that's going to create a composition for me and put my video into it. Now I'm just going to find a random frame, like uh, a frame with no car in it anyway, something like this, and I'm going to go to Composition, Save Frame As, File. Now let's set the output module to be a TIFF sequence. Click OK on that, and then let's set the output to, and we'll just pick a place to output this to. So I'm going to go for this place here. Save that, and let's click Render. Now if we jump back into Cinema 4D, we'll be able to create a new material, and we can call this HD frame. Let's open that up and we're going to turn off reflectance and we're going to load this into the color channel. So let's load in that image that we just saved out of After Effects there now. Here it is. And there it is. So now we can apply that to our... Now apologies, we need to load this into the luminance channel, not the color channel. So let's just copy this shader here turn off color and go into luminance so we can paste that in okay perfect now let's apply that to our sky object we don't want to see that in the background so right click on your sky object go to cinema 40 tags compositing and let's turn off scene by camera now if we turn on ambient occlusion in our render settings well ambient occlusion we don't need that right now. We'll turn it on later on. Just turn on global illumination. And now if we render this out, you're going to see that it's going to create, try and replicate the lighting based off of the image that we just applied to the sky object. So we're still going to need to create our own lights to improve this. But let's just see what that looks like without it. So it, it actually uh, is completely black. We actually have to turn off global illumination to see what it would really look like. So yeah, okay. So if we do a quick, I'm just gonna turn off save here, go into my output and set this to, oh, it's already set to current frame, that's fine. 
because I just want to do a rendered picture viewer here to show you the difference here. So this is without global illumination turned on. Now if I turn on our sky object and turn on global illumination, now you'll see the difference in that. So you can see that that's much, we're getting a much more realistic uh, result there with the sky object com combined with global illumination being turned on. Okay, so our floor doesn't look like it should at the moment. So what we can do is apply this background, uh, let's see, yeah, we can apply the background video to the floor, um, to the plane, I say, let's call it a floor. And now we can set the, well, we need to create a composition tag. So right click first of all and go to uh, compositing tag, I mean, meant to say compositing tag and we can turn on compositing background. Now, if we go into the texture tag here, we can set the projection to frontal and now our floor, if we do a render view here, our floor is actually gonna look like it should. Okay, cool. Um, so we need to create some shadows. So we're not really getting any at, at the moment. Uh, we could turn on ambient occlusion and get some contact shadows where the feet is touching the where the feet is touching the floor. Feet are touching the floor, but uh, we're going to need a bit more than that because we're going to try and replicate the actual s shadows that exist in our scene. So you can see that they're being projected to the, towards the right. So we're going to create a light somewhere around here. So let's just do that now, create a new light. And now we can just drag this over to the left. And let's drag it up along the Y. Now what we can do to make this easier for ourselves is go to Options and we can turn on Shadows. Now we'll get a representation of the shadows in our viewport. But we just need to make sure we have shadows turned on in our light object. Okay. I'm not seeing the shadows for some reason. I think I had it turned off or on. I don't know why that's not working. We seem to get in the shadows here in our viewport on our person but not on our floor. Aha and I know why. Our luminance channel is turned on in this material and this material is applied to our floor. Now we're not going to get any shadows if the surface is illuminated so we have to make a copy of this HD frame. Let's see. Yes, we need to make a copy of this and we can call this floor. Now if we open that up and turn off luminance, turn on color and our image is already here. It might not be for you. If it isn't, you can just go into luminance, copy the shader out, back into color and then paste that in. Now that we have a material that is showing our image through the color channel will be able to pick up shadows on it. So I'm just going to drag this new floor material and replace it here with the existing material we have on our floor at the moment. And now we're getting the shadow, the representation of the shadows based off of the fact that we use this shadows option here. So that's a really handy tool to use when you're setting up your lights uh, for compositing. Um, okay, so I want my shadow kind of going in this direction, so I'm just moving my light back and forth here until I'm happy with the direction. And let's move this up along the Y so that we can reduce the length of that shadow. Okay, so let's see what that is looking like now. I'll do a rendered picture viewer on that. So that's not looking too bad at all. Um, what I do want to do is I want to move my guy back a bit because he's a bit close to the center of the road and there are going to be cars driving by uh, pretty soon. So I better move him back a little bit. So with my camera, well, you don't need to select your camera. You just need to make sure it's active. And then I'm just going to zoom out to make him 
Actually, I'm not going to zoom out. I'm just going to lift him up. Because zooming out is going to make him smaller. And I just want him to be further up the road without actually appearing to be smaller. Something like that. And I just need to run through my uh, motion capture just to make sure that he's not going to step up onto that uh, roundabout there. Yeah, okay. So that's pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Okay, cool. So next we can, well, let's turn on our interactive render region here so we can see what we have yet to do or not to do. Let's see. Okay, so it's all looking pretty good at the moment. What I'd like to do is kind of add some reflection to our character so that he's not so, I don't know, boring looking. So a bit of reflection will kind of spice him up a bit. So let's go into our character's material here, material, and go into the reflectance channel. Let's add in a Beckman. Set the attenuation to additive. And let's see what that does for us. Okay, so I'm going to bring down the reflection strength to about 20%. Not 250. And I want to bring the specular strength down to 1. So I'm going to go down even further with the reflection down to about 5%. And jump into specular here. And let's make that width a bit thinner. Okay, so now I want to turn up the roughness of this a little bit. So jump back into the Beckman layer here and let's crank up the roughness to be about 23%. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I might even go a bit lower in the reflection strength, maybe down to 3.5%. And yeah, okay. I'm going to leave him like that. Specular, I'll go down to 0 0.5, and then that's it for sure. <laughs> Because you could be tweaking it forever, as I've said many times. Uh, yeah, okay. Happy with that. Brilliant. Now, also I noticed that the shadow here is very smooth and there's no breaks in it. Like, this is tarmac, so you're going to expect a few breaks in the shadow. Maybe very fine uh, breaks. So what we can do is add some bump to our floor material, which is here. Let's open that up. And turn on bump and let's create a noise here jump into that noise let's set the global scale to 10 and let's see what that looks like okay so you can see we're getting some graininess in our shadow based off of that new bump setting so that's looking pretty good I think that's everything then we can we can pretty much set this up for render um, we could change the light a bit because as this was shot let's uh, let's see if we change the color of the light if that will give us a bit of an improvement let's go for a colder cooler kind of a color and see what we get Yeah, okay, I think I like that a little bit more. So I think this is ready to set up for render now. I'm just going to do a few test frames at some various frames and see what it's looking like. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So what we need to do now is we need to, before we set this up for render, let's just turn off our background. Hold down Alt and just 
double click here on these uh, traffic lights. They're not called traffic lights, but they look like traffic lights. Um, and we can, we need to create a shadow catcher shader for our floor. So let's go down here to create and shader shadow catcher. And let's just overwrite the existing material on our floor by just dragging that hovering over the existing and then releasing. Okay, so that is going to, I'm just going to turn off the interactive render region now and do a render preview here. Okay, so this floor is now going to act as a shadow catcher and you'll see what that does in a second once we render this out and jump into After Effects. So let's set this up for render. I'm just going to do a control S on this to make sure my file is saved. Jump into my render settings. Output, I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080. And I want to render all frames. <clears throat> Turn on save. Set it to be a PNG sequence. And now we are going to save this. to a folder called sequence. Okay, make sure alpha channel is turned on, otherwise this won't work. And that is everything. Ambient occlusion is turned on, global illumination is turned on also. Okay, so control S again on that, and then I'm just going to click render to picture viewer. And that is going to render away. So it's going to render on my machine, it looks like it's going to be about four or three frames a second. Uh, so that's going to take a bit of time. What we can do while we're waiting for that is jump into After Effects, double click in this left panel here, and then we can go to our sequence folder. And you can see that our sequence is just rendering away there, frames are appearing. So if I click on the first one, make sure PNG sequence is ticked, and if I import that in, jump back into my street composition here now, and we can just place that on top of our street video. Make sure our timeline here, make sure your, your marker is right at the beginning of the timeline. And if we zoom in, we can set the set an end point here using N on our keyboard and now we can just play that on a loop. So that's looking pretty good. I'm actually happy with the size of the guy. So as that's rendering away, straight away I'm seeing something that I want to change. So the length of our shadow is way too long. If we go ahead here a little bit somewhere Yeah, here. So we see the length of the shadow of this car and the length of our guy is much longer than that. So I want to change the length of our shadow. And I also want to reduce the the darkness. It's a bit too dark. Um, so I'm going to reduce that down a bit as well. So I'm just going to jump back into Cinema 4D and Let's see, we need to reapply our floor material to our floor so we can see what we're doing with the shadow. And now we can grab our light and we can just start moving this up until we're happy with the, <clears throat> with the length of our shadow. Something like that. We can do a, re a quick render there to have a look. Yeah, so that's way better. And also I want to reduce the darkness. So I'm going to reapply my shadow material. And I'm just going to open that up. And in here I can change the shadow strength down to about, we'll go 80 on that. Okay, so now if we just click on render to picture viewer again, it's going to ask us, 
if we want to stop the uh, existing render now and just say yes to that and if we want to overwrite and we do so yes to that again so that will render away again so once this gets to frame 7 I'm going to jump back into After Effects and then we can start messing around with it so this is actually frame 5 is good enough I'm going to jump into After Effects now and I'm going to go back to the beginning and click on my sequence right click on it uh, go to reload footage and we're going to see a change straight away you're going to see the new render is being brought in so now our shadow is shorter still it could be shorter again um, and it could be a little bit lighter as well so what we can do is jump back into Cinema 4D and let's reapply that floor material to our floor. I'm going to lift this light up even more. Something like that. And I'm going to reapply my shadow catcher. And then I'm going to bring this down to about 70%. Now let's do that again. Render to picture viewer. Say yes, you want to stop the existing one and overwrite. Okay, so that is rendering away again. So let's jump back into After Effects. Make sure you're on the first frame here. Right click on the sequence and reload footage. So that's looking better. Okay, shadow's nice and short. It's uh, a bit lighter now, still quite dark but I'm leaving it as is and that is going to render away and we can let that render again I'm going to pause the um, video here and we'll come back to this jump into After Effects when this is all rendered okay so now we have everything rendered we can reload our sequence and then we can just zoom out here of our timeline and now we can just uh, bring this work area here to the end and drag out our sequence as well. So that's our whole scene. And we could say we're finished now at this stage. That's pretty cool. We could render that out. Um, but I want to make it a bit more interesting. I'm just going to drag this street video along here. And I want to have this car in our video so he's gonna the car is just gonna pop in and drive in front of our character so how are we gonna go about doing that so we're gonna use masks and we're gonna mask this guy out just as the car is driving past so we need to duplicate our street video and we can grab this one here this is the one we're gonna create the mask on so select your pen tool and let's find the point at which we're going to start drawing out this mask so I'm just going to bring the car over to about here because I want to be able to get around this part of the car a bit easier so I'm just going to turn off my character for the time being and now I'm going to mask around the, the uh, edge of this car Now when we get to around this point we can't really see much else of the car so what we need to do is just, let's just zoom out a bit and we can use control and the directional keypads to go left and right in our video. So go backwards and forwards basically. So we want to bring our car back so that we can see the front of it. Now we need to select the mask that we've created and we need to be able to bring it back to the back of the car. So just go to your selection tool here. Let's select that mask. Just drag it over. Match it up as best as you can.
and now we can go back into our pen tool and okay so I had to actually google what it is uh, you do at this stage because I couldn't figure out how to reselect or continue the path um, so what you have to do is now I have it done already so I just pause the video there you have to select the mask and then you have to go to your selection tool and select drag it to select the last vertex that you created and then you can go to your pen tool and then you can continue it on it so that was that caught me out there so good old google saved the day um so now we can continue on this path uh, don't worry about the fact that it's not tighty uh, tightly hugging the the outline of the car we can fix it as we go along further into the tutorial so let's just continue on our path okay so now that we have that drawn out what we can do is turn back on our character and so we can still see him so we need to let's see we need to try subtract so this needs to be above the dance streets layer first of all so let's just drag that up and now let's change this back to add okay so now our guy is behind our car so we need to animate our path so that it's going to follow the car in the video um, so we can go ahead and do that now so let's bring our car back to around the part where it's just about to come in and then we can grab our selection tool just lasso the whole path make sure it's selected first of all and then select all the points there let's drag this over and just kind of line it up as best we can now we can set a keyframe here in mask path so just click this little uh, clock icon there and let's use control and the right arrow key on our keyboard just kind of bring it up to about this point just before he's going to uh, connect with our character let's see what that looks like okay so we need to bring it a bit further now so that it's following along with our car and I'm just going to continue this process until the car has reached the end of the shot. So I'm coming up towards the end of this now, so just come back in here and uh, select all of these points, bring this to the end, try and line it up as best I can, and just kind of uh, use my arrow keys holding down control to test out how it's looking. So that's looking pretty good. Um, now as you can see well as you should be able to see you should be able to see his uh, body through the window here so we need to create another mask for the window it's going to bring the car back to just before the window goes over our character and now we can select our pen tool and let's create the mask for the car window now the this one here and we have to mask around this guy's face also. Okay, so let's see what we get 
as our car moves over our character. So we don't get anything because we haven't animated this yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, let's select the mask 2 that we just created. And we can give it a different color here. Just click, right clicking on the little square color icon here. And now let's create a mask path keyframe. And let's use the control and our arrow keys to just push our car, car forward there. Now let's grab our selection tool and just select these this mask and we can drag it right to the end here and try and line it up as best we can. Now we can just go back using the control and the arrow keys to see what that is looking like. So that's not looking too bad straight away. Or well actually it's looking terrible because we still can't see the man. But as far as the mask following the car goes, it's pretty good. We won't have to do much tweaking there. So how do we see our man through the window? So what we need to do is we need to change this here to be subtract. And it's as simple as that. So now let's just zoom out here. Um, we can go to 100%. Actually, let's fit to screen or fit. And now let's hit play and see what that looks like. Let's bring it back a bit. Okay. Okay, so some weirdness going on here. His arm is coming out over the car. We don't want that to happen. So it's probably being caused by this mask here. So let's just move that even further over. So let's select that lasso, select that mask. Let's bring that out of the way and let's see if that fixes that problem. So let's fix that problem. Okay. How's everything else looking? So we need to do one more mask for the back window. Select our street video and let's go into our pen tool. And now let's draw out the mask for this window here. Okay. So now we can create a keyframe on the mask path here. And again, we can use the control and the arrow keys to move our car to the position we want it to be in. So let's just bring that right past our character. Now we can grab with our selection tool, we can grab that mask. Now we don't want to grab any part of our first mask. So what we can do is lock it. We might as well lock the uh, blue mask as well. Then we can grab this without worrying about uh, grabbing any part of the other masks. And then we can just bring that over and try and match that up. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Again, we need to switch this to be subtract. Not this one, this one here. And now that is looking better. Okay, so I think I'm happy enough with that. It's still a bit rough around the edges. We still need to do a bit of tweaking to make it better. So I'm going to focus on mask 3 for this. So let's see what we can do with this. So we can bring this down a bit. It's fine. Go to the next frame using the control and the arrow keys. That's fine as well. Bring this down a little bit, or even actually up. And then bring it down. This one can go over a bit. And actually this can go down a lot. This one a little.
So we're getting an issue there at the end with this hand. It's kind of being cut off again by the masks that are overlapping. So we'll just fix that. Just grab this orange mask and move it ahead. Now, that should have solved the problem. Okay, perfect. So that's good to go. All that's left to do is render this out. And before you could do that, what you can do is just make sure that your work area is set to the point at which you want to cut. And then you can hit Control Shift X to trim the comp to the work area. And that's it, guys. Composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder queue, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching the tutorial, guys, and I hope you learned a lot. Now for those of you who do, who do intend to take part in this by making your own video, please send it on to me. My email is in the description below. I'm going to take everything I get and edit it all together into one song length video. Once it's finished, I'm going to upload it and credit everybody who took part. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.